I think these horrendous social problems that we f face are undermining uh, every other aspect of American life. How would you identify those problems? Well, you, you start out with the departure from the uh, fundamental principle on which the country was based. The fundamental principle on which the country was based, the Declaration of Independence. And the fact we were endowed by our creator with certain in inalienable rights and then consent of the governed. And uh, uh, Jefferson himself indicated that uh, the God who gave his life gave his liberty. Can any nation's liberties remain secure for he removes the conviction that his liberties are the gift of God? Well, we're, not only is God dead, we're substituting condoms for God in a lot of places through the country today. We don't even teach the correct history of this country anymore. And then you move on to the disintegration of family, the disintegration of communities, the, the uh, widespread promotion of sex out of sight of marriage, teenage pregnancy that's exploding, sing single parent families, drugs, crime, uh, extreme pockets of poverty, a growing underclass in our urban areas. I could go on with all these problems. Education in too many instances doesn't educate, uh, literacy, and so on. These social problems are undermining. The business leadership of this country is more concerned about getting adequately educated employees than any other single thing. And yet the problem of getting adequately ed educated employees gets back to dealing with these social problems because the youngsters are going to school not ready to learn but confronted with so many social problems that the teachers are having to de deal with two crises. Not only the crisis of uh, educating to a higher level because of the more complex economy in which we're uh, competing, but also having to deal with these social problems. They can't do, deal with those two crises at the same time. What did, we, what did we have originally when the Constitution was written? They asked Franklin, what have you given us? He said, we've given you a republic, and if you can keep it. Now, we didn't keep it. As a result of various changes that were made to uh, change the re representative character of the structure that they created, we created a democracy. And in my opinion, we no longer have a democracy. We've got a special interest democracy, a, a, a political process that's dominated by the special interests. That's why they can't deal with this deficit. Uh, the presidents, uh, for some time, have recommended getting rid of programs that are obsolete, should have been eliminated many years ago. They can't get them eliminated because uh, there are enough people benefiting from some the program that they're trying to get eliminated so that they can't get the votes in Congress. As uh, Senator Long of Louisiana said, don't cut me and don't cut thee, but cut that guy behind the tree. In other words, cut everybody else but my constituents. Let's take a uh, look at what President Ford said. President Ford made a very honest statement when he made his first talk to Congress. He said, as, when I was a representative of the Grand Rapids District, I went after every dollar I could get for my district because that was a worthwhile public investment. And then he turned to the Speaker of the House, a Democrat, Speaker Albert, and he said, but I opposed every dollar you went after for your district because that was pork barrel waste. Now, I've seen the federal government balloon to proportions that are way beyond everything conceived by the founders. And it, in my opinion, completely in violation of the Tenth Amendment uh, to the Constitution of the United States, which only gives the federal government the power not reserved for the states and the people. Well, the states are just... Uh, almost uh, satellites of the federal government now. And most people are getting some benefit from the federal government. We, we, we really have moved. We've, moved. we've changed the method. We've not only changed our political, we changed the economic system. Uh, if I had time, I could take you right through the... Ch we no longer have a free competitive enterprise system that resulted in our becoming the first nation in history to lift, lift people out of poverty uh, with the consumer and the driver's seat. Uh, we've substituted what's now a, a semi-monopolistic economy. Uh, and there's some of us, I think, that are still uh, around who've lived long enough to see what's happened to this country to realize that we've got to get back to the basics. We've got to strengthen our fundamental principles. We've got to get to back to the basic methods that made us the most competitive nation on Earth. I was the first one to, on the national level to conclude that we'd made a mistake going into Vietnam. Now, not a moral mistake. But I concluded we made a foreign policy and military mistake going into Vietnam. So I began to voice my concerns. And I concluded that after that visit in 65, during which I had this uh, story by the ambassador that if we had to be briefing. there to prevent, uh, yeah, briefing, had to be there to prevent World War III and uh, 
uh, the the general uh, he, he he said we were just there going to be there as advisors. We weren't going to become involved. Well, all those things turned about to be false. Furthermore, this idea that we were there to prevent China from taking over is a lot of baloney because the the Vietnamese have been resisting Chinese Chinese influence in that area for centuries. See, so we were given a lot of misinformation with respect to why we're in Vietnam, and I voiced this with a term I used to use in the. Uh, design room at American Motors when they're trying to make those small ramblers bigger cars, I'd say, stop trying to brainwash me.